Okay, so we're going to get started with our uh, review of the uh, first task in Milestone 4. And Michelle, I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to put my introductory comments with your drawing, um, talk a little bit about what we're doing with this assignment, which is essentially what we're doing here is we're um, taking what we have learned from especially Milestone 1 and 2 with 1 and 2 point perspective, and we're just adding a few additional perspective um, concepts uh, this week. Um, and those concepts are working with an ellipse and adding in cast shadows. And then in the next assignment, we'll start working with shading, which isn't, which isn't really exactly a perspective concept because you, know, you, you shade in a lot of different drawings, but it does help you create that sense of three-dimensionality, which we think of as being a hallmark of perspective. So we'll get started with that. But right now what we're doing is a line drawing and you can, you're using this uh, printout again. I know, you know, the printout is not ideal uh, in terms of drawing, but we'll just, you know, work with it. Um, but, you know, what we're doing is either choosing one or two point perspective and then you're creating just a, you know, a simple composition in. Um, it looks like, Michelle, you've used a, it looks like a standing mirror and a bed, which is good. And then what we're doing is we're adding a light source and we're going to use that to add the shading and cast shadows. Okay, so that's basically it. Let's see, scale figure, ellipse, cast shadows. I think that's it. So um, okay, so I have, um, I'm going to, Michelle, if you don't mind, I'm going to talk a little bit about cast shadows with your drawing. Um, cast shadows, I think, you know, they're a little tricky for everybody. Uh, even if you've been working in perspective for a while. So if you don't, you know, if it doesn't make sense right away, don't worry. It's very normal. Uh, there's a really good tutorial in the assignment directions that you've probably seen. What I've also done is I just um, did a quick YouTube search on cast shadow perspective videos, and I just have the results link right here. So give that a try. There's some, you know, good basic videos in there. If there's one in particular that you think is you know, really good, you really understand, you know, you find it really helpful, you know, just post a reply back there and let me know, because uh, it's always good for me to hear what students have to say, and then I can, you know, maybe refine these results a little bit, a little, little bit more. So let's see if what you said here. Okay, okay, yeah. So, so, um, yeah, so I think you've got a, you know, good composition here. Um, I think you, your scale figure looks really good. I think you've got a good start to your oval. You might, you know, maybe try to put another another oval somewhere, uh, like flat maybe, you know, even a little kind of tiny round rug here, little place here, just so that you can really uh, work on um, inscribing it. You really want to demonstrate showing the inscribing of it that's described in the, you know, in the learning path to, to show that, to show that um, way that you constructed it. So you might give that a try. Um, otherwise, I think this is looking good. And I think the only thing that I would suggest here is to work a little bit more on your cast shadow from your bed. So it looks like, so what you're doing is there's two sets of cast shadow points in each of the, the one, either the one point or the two points. So in this case, there's one here and one here. And these are the ones you're, you're going to be using. You're going to choose which one you're going to use. And so you've chosen this one. And then so we let's so we're going to just cast it off of the bed now, and I'll I'll sort of run through the different steps here for how to do that, because um, it's you know maybe helpful somebody else as well. Let me get a little bit bigger here. Let's see, something that I really recommend that everybody do is to you know you can just print out um, a blank template, you know one of these templates. Um, and um, put a cube, like put a cube somewhere in the center, or a few cubes, like just float them in the center on the floor, like just a just a cube or a square rectangle, and cast a shadow from that, because you'll really learn a lot by just doing that. That would that be that would be actually a very good basic exercise, because I think once you start putting in a lot of details into your drawings, everything gets a little bit more kind of mushy, and it's harder to see the cast shadows. So that's that's how I learned is just putting a cube in the center of a space. 
So you might give that a try. Um, okay, so how do we uh, create the cast shadow here? So the first thing I think is really good is to visualize where the light is going to be, just based on your own experience. Like if, you know, if here's the light, here's the light bulb, where would the cast shadows be? Well, you know, we know that the light's going to hit this side right on. It's going to be the brightest here. And, but then on the other side here, like you have started, you know, you indicated some shading on here, it's going to be darker on this side. And then the shadow is going to fall this way. Okay, actually, I think you plotted it in here. I, I, I just, I don't think I saw the line here, but I think you've got it here. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to keep going with yours just to demonstrate it for other folks. Um, so you always start, so where is it going to be cast? It's going to be cast from these points right here, this point right here of the bed and this point right here. That's where it's going to cast. And so we use the bottom point here, which is the shadow vanishing point. And what we do is we draw a line through the bottom of this point. You see, so it goes down through this bottom. And then we let's just do the same for here as well to get both of these done. Yeah, I see that you've done it right here. And then, so now we have um, the direction of the shadow. You know, so it's, we know that it's going to start here. And then we, st we go at the top, and then we go downwards. This is going to be the length of it. You can see I'm going right outside of the um, composition. That's okay. I just want to see where it is. So we're going to just, let me just lengthen this line a little bit. So here now we've got the point where this is where the shadow is going to start, right here, where these join. And then we do the same thing here. We join this up and we go and we go down and where it crosses is where the shadow starts. Okay, So it's going to, in this case, that's falling on the wall. So what we would do is we would draw a shadow um, parallel here to the bed, the edge of the bed down here that's going to be where it ends. So it's, we're going to have shadow through this whole area. And then it's actually going to go up the wall, all the way up the wall. So it's actually going to, so it's actually going to go up the wall. Now, where does it end up the wall? It actually ends, you take this point up here, let's lengthen it a bit, um, the top uh, point, and that's where it ends, right here. So this is all going to be shaded back here on the wall as, as well, this whole area right here. So you know, the mirror is in front of it. So this is going to be in shadow behind the mirror here. This is going to be shaded and all of this. And we'll, so we'll end it, you know, at the line of the composition, but this entire area is in shadow. Okay. Okay. So that's basically how to do, how to do that. And again, you know, it really helps just by doing the cube exercise first to really, um, you know, get a really good understanding of how to do it. Um, just put a cube in an empty space and then cast your shadows. And I think a lot of the videos from the YouTube video um, link that I that I posted actually do the same thing, make it really easy. Okay. Um, all right, Michelle, I think that is uh, it. And then with your guy, yes, so he's going to be, that's right, so that's where the shadow is going to be coming here and here. And you might actually have to cast a little bit more of a shadow on the wall here from the mirror. Um, I think it would be, you'd probably get a whole mirror, um, you know, it reproduced along the wall in the shape of this. Um, it would actually be, so it would actually be, and using this top point, so we'd come, so here's the edge of the wall. So what we would do is we would go up, just kind of go up here, up the wall, we're on the wall here, take this line and go through the top of the mirror and this is where it would hit the top this top point here would hit right there and then you could sort of kind of fake it in through this the shape here okay all right um okay good job michelle and uh, let me know if you have any questions okay let's see this is uh looking for an office chair uh Angela, a little trouble trying, yeah, yeah, you know, it's tricky. So, um, oh, so uh, just to continue with my introductory comments for this week, 
Uh, I just forgot to mention just another kind of important point ab about what we're doing this week, and then we'll talk about your drawing, is that what we're really doing here too is preparing for our final drawing for the class, which will start next week, uh, you know, in, in Milestone 5. And so we're actually completing everything we're really learning this week, you know, with the addition of the ellipse and the scale figure and the, ca and the shading and the cast shadows. And then once you're done with that, then next week you're going to be able to, you're going to work on an interior scene just like this, and you're either going to do one, two, or three point perspective. You can choose whichever one you want. And then you're going to make your own composition and just include all of these different elements. So that's, you know, so this week really is like the preparation for the final drawing where you're going to put everything together. Okay, uh, Angela, yeah, this looks really good. I love your composition. It's very detailed, lots of wonderful um, kind of elements. Uh, I love what you did here with the paneling or the, it, you know, the if blinds are panning, whatever it's happening here, it looks really good. Uh, the scale figure, you've got an ellipse, which you've inscribed. I can see all the line work there, which is wonderful. And it looks like you've identified this as being your light source. And I think that this is the this is the best choice. So there's two choices you hear. There's this or this, and I think there's always like a better choice of where you in these drawings where you put your light source. And in this case, you know, what would happen is we can imagine that this light source is gonna gonna go you know in this direction towards our sofa, which is our main element, and it's kind of gonna just not really um, touch it very much. It's gonna like if we if we examine where it's going to, it's going to cast the shadow. It's actually going to cast in just into this little corner here. So we won't really see the power of the cast shadow. So it really is, it's, it's, it won't really, it won't really um, teach us that much, as much as it, we could. So yeah, using this one is better. So, and there's actually sort of three, what I would do with this is think about, you know, three different areas that you're going to cast from and it's it's going to be at the front really here of the um, sofa so you can start to think about casting a shadow from this area here from this guy here as a rectangle oops so, you know this one and then this is going to be another rectangle. I would kind of like think of them separately and kind of cast them separately. I'm going to erase these lines in a minute so they're not in the way. But this line and then finally, you know, this last guy here. And the reason why this is a good idea to do is because then when we cast our shadow, here, let's just put this right up here, then it's if it needs to, it's going to take on the shape of this top you know it's going to cast with long this is going to be a little longer and this is shorter and this is a little longer um now you have like um this table here which actually i think it's very a very nice placement you know it's like working really well as, as a foreground element and your ellipse and everything but if you don't mind i'm just going to pretend it's not here for the sake of this drawing just for the sake of showing this cast shadow um so that you know we can sort of see how the shadow and then you can sort of hide what you need to with the table but i'm going to go draw all over it right now uh, and you would you could just do this with guidelines so that's quite light um, okay so we start we're going to start by um, doing this so we're going to start by casting through this line right here just like we did in the previous drawing so we're going to start by going here this is the direction of the shadow so we know it's going to start going that way and then we're going to find now where does it end this this governs where it's going to end so we're going to go to the, this top point and go across and there's our first point right there now let's do this this guy right here this side so we can see where it's going to be so i'm going to actually drag this line down here so i can find that bottom point and i would just you know do that with a little guideline just to kind of mark that bottom right here and now i'm going to go and do exactly the same thing i'm going to go through the bottom and then through the top here, down here. So this is our first, so this is going to be, this line that I'm drawing right now is the shadow that's coming from this, this area right here. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can get a little closer. 
Okay. Uh, in fact, maybe um, I'm going to actually change my colors here just to map that in. Uh, pink good is pink good color. Maybe I'll maybe I'll do a yellow. Uh, I think maybe I think I'm going to use red. Okay, so now I'm just going to map out this wing so we know it's going to end here, and then it's going to be coming from here. So that's our kind of our first placement. Let's go back to that blue. Okay, so now I'm going to want to map out um, where it's falling here, this line, because it's it's not going to be as high. You so know, this is where it's it's cast from this higher point, but at a lower point, it's not going to be as high. You know, the shadow is not going to be as long from here. So we're going to try to maybe do this point as well. So right, so right in here. Uh, so let's go through and. Um, so this is the, it's going to be exactly the same line right here again. I don't need to redraw that because it's going through. Well, actually I do. I do want to go redraw that. What am I saying? So here. And then down again. Except this time we're going to go through this line. Okay, so now you can see, can you see how now this line is actually a lot shorter? This is where the shadow is going to, let's actually do this point right here now so we can join it up right here. Cast shadows do take a bit of time. They are a little complex. So now we're going to go through this guy. You can see here that it gets very... I'm going to go through here, actually sort of disappearing. Can you see that it's touching it? So it's not even going to be casting. It's so, you know, angled. So in fact, um, I'm going to un undo that and just sort of draw this line, you know, up to about here. I'm going to just kind of draw it here. This is where the shadow will be just a tiny little shadow happening here. Let's just cast this one here, see what's happening with that. And we can see that it's going to be cast right onto the floor here. And all the way up too. So it's actually going to go right up like this. So this is, so it's going to be on the wall right here, all through here, and then also on the floor. That's where the cast shadow is going to be, all through there. Um, it's actually also going to flow along the wall in the back, so this wall needs to have a cast shadow too. So it's going to go this way along the cast, along the wall, in this little section in here, along this wall. Whew, that's so that's a lot, right? So that's a, so you know, when the more complex your shapes are, uh, the more your cast shadows they have to follow those lines. So if that didn't make a lot of sense, hopefully it made some sense, then I would go and uh, you know keep practicing with those YouTube tutorials that I mentioned. Some of them have some more com kind of complex shapes that can really help. Um, and your table, because this light is coming from here, it's not going to cast any shadow at all. So nothing's going to happen with that. But your guy here is going to cast a shadow, and it's going to start from its feet across, and then across its head onto the wall. So it's going to kind of come up like so onto the wall. And then you can kind of, like, you can also use... Um, this to kind of create so this is going to be where the head is and then um, you can sort of kind of I'm just using sort of information from the video tutorial for the instructions and this is where you could sort of map out the torso and then you could go even down to the knees and kind of cast the shadow there's where the knees would be so that would be where the cast shadow is for the guy okay well I hope that's in some ways useful okay Amy
Yeah, it looks good with your kitchen. Nice. Yeah, very detailed. Your oval looks really good here. Looks like you inscribed it. Um, and you've got your scale figure. Nice. Yeah, it looks really good. And um, I think your cast shadows overall look are looking really good. Uh, so this is your light source from here. And your cast shadows, yeah, so they'd come out from here. Good. And, and then... Um, And then, yes, so I think this looks right. Let's see here, just, that would kind of come down this way. Yeah, so approximately there. So, uh, yeah, this looks good too. So the only thing I think that you'd want to add here with your cast shadow is just that there is also going to be a shadow cast along the wall from here and from this, um, from your fridge. So you would just kind of go across here, across the top and then it would um, flow up here, it looks to me like. That's where you've got your shadow ending here. So it would also be along that wall. Okay, um, all right, that looks really good. So uh, nice job with that. Hey, Jordan. Yeah, so it looks like you've got uh, the beginning of maybe like a dining room table or a conference table something like that. So you just want to make sure that you're working with the template for this assignment. This is really important because it'll map out the floor space, also the lighting, um, you know, all of those things that you need to have to create this. So please do use the template and print it out. And if you don't have a printer, you could um, just like kind of copy it onto a piece of paper. I've had a lot of students who do that, who just take that template and just trace it out, you know, by uh, using using your just you know looking at it from your computer screen getting a blank piece of paper and then just drawing it out it's very important that you have that so I would start with that and then you can start taking this composition if you like uh, and put it and apply it into that template okay if you let, have any questions let me know but make sure you have that done so that you can construct everything and then you can also make sure that you include the other elements which are the ellipse and the cast shadows, the construction, um, and then the scale, the scale figure, all of those things that you need.